Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to install widgets from other services into your app. Now I'm not talking about Bubble plugins, I'm actually taking us outside of Bubble just a little bit and working with widgets that require a small amount of code to go into your app. And this is typically code that is generated for you by the service that you're working with. So the examples that I've got here um, are a live chat box that you might use for customer support and an automated pop-up with a sign-up form inside of it. For the chat box example, I'm using a service called Crisp. There's a ton of services that actually do very similar things for like customer support chatting. So Intercom is a very popular one. Uh, another one is Talk2, there's Olark, there's Chatleo. There's a ton of them out there. They all have their own uh, different spins on this type of thing. But essentially you have a live chat box on your site um, through this little widget that's kind of always present on every single page of your application and your visitors can immediately start typing in there and then the messages come to you through your dashboard uh, with the service. So I'm using Crisp, but they all kind of work the same way. So what you're going to want to do um, with any service uh, involving a widget like this, you're going to go to your account on, on their site and navigate to the installation settings um, to where they provide a code for you. Okay, so they will generate this HTML code for you and all you have to do is copy it. So I'm gonna right click this here, copy this code, and I'm gonna go into my bubble editor and you'll wanna go to your settings tab and then SEO and meta tags. If you scroll down kind of to the middle bottom of the page, you see these two empty boxes here. Now the documentation for the uh, where the code is coming from, it should tell you where to put the code, if it needs to go into the head section of your HTML or the body. Okay, so it's really important where it goes. So you need to see um, what they specify. So this instruction is telling me that I need to add it to the head section um, of my HTML. So I'm gonna place it up here. I'm just gonna paste that in there. Right now, if I preview my page with the debugger off, then I can see at the very bottom here, no matter where I scroll, it's just kind of stuck at the bottom there. I have this little chat widget and I can click on it and it will uh, open it up. Now this widget is completely generated by Crisp. It has nothing to do with Bubble. The only connection to Bubble is the fact that I pasted that generated code here in the header box. All right, so now as soon as I type, um, you know, in a message here, hello, I have a question, and send that, I can go into my uh, crisp dashboard and I should see my message coming in here because it's completely tied to my account. There I can see here's a visitor that asked this question. So that code is everything. That code connects your app to um, your account with the service, okay? Now, I am entering this code here into the site-wide um, area for the header. So any page that I'm on in my app, that little chat bubble will show up. But if I just wanted it on a single page only, what I would do instead, I'm gonna remove that code there and go to the page that I want the widget on only and then navigate to the property editor for the page and you can see at the very bottom you have a box for page HTML header. So I can also add it there. Okay, this is still adding it to the HTML head, but it's just gonna be for this page only. So all of my other pages in my app will not have the um, widget. So I'll refresh it here just to make sure that the widget is still there. And there it is. And it even picked, uh, picked up my previous conversation. So we know that putting the code in the header for the page or for the site itself, both work just the same. Now let's go over to this other example uh, with MailChimp. So MailChimp has an option for you to create a pop-up form on their site. Of course you can create pop-ups in Bubble, um, so I'm just kind of showing you another example of a different type of widget, but generally that we're following the same principle. We just want to get some generated code and pop it into our uh, HTML settings there. So MailChimp does let you design a whole pop-up here with all sorts of settings. And when you're finished designing it, you can click on view code down at the bottom here. So here I can grab the code, I can copy it, and you'll notice that in this box here, I don't have any instructions about where specifically these, this needs to go, whether it's in the head or in the body of the page. 
Um, so I actually opened up the documentation for this particular feature, and this also doesn't specify. In fact, what they say is that the best place to add the code varies from site to site. Um, so what I did, I'm in a different app now, is I put it in the header, I just pasted it in there, and previewed the page. I actually got an error for this. So I'm going to close this other one here, and we'll see what the error looks like. So it tells me that I'm unable to load necessaries. Basically, it's, I'm, I'm able to see that it's not really supposed to go up there. So I removed it from up top there and moved it into the body and previewed again. And now I have my pop-up and everything looks okay. So it looks like for this one with MailChimp um, and maybe with Bubble specifically working with MailChimp, uh, it's best to put this script in the body. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if it doesn't work in one, pop it into the other area, it might work better there. So we can see here that the pop-up comes up just fine. And if I enter in an email address and click this button, again, this is all code generated by MailChimp. So it's completely connected to that service. If I hit subscribe, it'll subscribe a new user um, with my MailChimp account there. And their editor for their pop-up and stuff is, you know, I can make changes, I can republish, and the code stays the same. That's generally how it goes with these things is you can modify these widgets and the code should stay the same because what the code is doing is really just connecting the site to your account. Um, and whatever, however you've set up these widgets on your account, um, it'll just reflect the most... Uh, recently saved changes for that thing. So if I update the picture or change the wording here, the code, if I click view code, it's not going to be any different. It'll be the same. So I can just hit publish and it will uh, be updated on my bubble app as well. Right. So hopefully that gives you a good idea about how to get these widgets installed into your app. Um, you know, you're really not working with code very much. You're just copying and pasting uh, these generated pieces of JavaScript. Um, so again, the places that you want to keep in mind, we're under settings, and then SEO and meta tags. It's probably not super clear that this stuff is there, but if you navigate down to advanced settings, you're, you're either looking at your header or in the body, or alternatively at the page level and putting it directly into the pages um, HTML header box here. Right? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.